Hi, BookTube. Um, tonight I would like to review a book, The Bancroft Strategy by Robert Ludlum. Also be talking a little bit of general information of, uh, about Robert Ludlum, the author. So, Robert Ludlum wrote his novels from 1971 all the way up until he passed away in March of 2001. And in a few of his uh, unwritten books that were manuscripts or notes taken were published posthumously. The last one of which, which was accredited to his name, was The Bancroft Strategy in 2006. So I was curious about this book because it was ghostwritten um, is several years after Robert Ludlum passed away. So it's, his, it's the last novel accredited to him. I also have his first novel. Hang on. I also have his first novel, uh, The Scarlatti Inheritance. So this is the last one under his name. And this is the first one under his name. So, I was just uh, curious about it, and I wanted to see the differences in style uh, from what Robert Ludlum actually wrote and how it would appear differently if someone else wrote it. At the end of the day, there's not much difference. Um, I'd like to compare this one more. So, this, this early one was actually it has a very different style compared to some some of his other later works. Um, this one, The Apocalypse Watch, which features a lot in my book vlogs, um, the difference is between, this, uh, between the Bancroft strategy and the Apocalypse Watch is the Apocalypse Watch has a ton of padding. Now, padding, if you don't know, is intentionally making a book longer with redundant information. Now that does that's not to say the Bancroft strategy did not have any padding, it because it did, but a lot less. And as you can see, as you can see, this one has like 500 something pages, maybe less because there's some blank pages. This one has like 780 pages. This one was a chunker. It took me almost three months to finish it. So, that's why I appreciated this one, the Bancroft strategy. Now, this video is about this one, this book, so now I will start making my review. I'll read you the blurb, that way I'll give you like a general overview of the plot, because I'm not going to get into the plot too much. Agent Todd Belknap has been cut loose after an operation goes wrong, when his best friend, and fellow agent is abducted, and the government refuses to help. Todd takes matters into his own hands. Motorcycle. Meanwhile, Andrea Newton, and here is a weird thing. They said Newton. Her last name is actually Bancroft, so this blurb actually got it wrong. This Orion edition of, of, uh, of uh, Robert Ludlum's book got it wrong on the back. Meanwhile, Andrea Bancroft gets an unexpected call. She has been left a vast inheritance by a cousin she's never met, on the condition that she joins the board of a, the charitable Newton, uh, the charitable Bancroft Foundation. Andrea is intrigued, but the foundation appears less and less benign, the more deeply involved she gets. What exactly is their involvement with, Gen with the Genesis, a mysterious group working to destabilize the geopolitical balance at the risk of millions of lives? As events escalate, Todd and Andrea must form an uneasy alliance if they are to uncover the truth before it's too late. So basically, a non-profit charitable foundation has some shady practices, include um, which involve manipulating events around the world for their benefit. Um, I won't tell you what their motives are. 
Unlike some evil organizations, this one actually has an ideology and a motive. A lot of others are just in it for pure power. So I actually like that. And for an airport novel, for an airport novel, this actually has some philosophical thoughts to chew on, which was interesting because most airport novels are just uh, espionage uh, thrillers that uh, are just uh, to uh, entertain and keep you busy, keep you reading every page as you're on a long flight or on a long uh, ride on a, on a train, for instance. So, will, will this book stick with me in 10 years' time? Probably not, but, but the odds are of me um, remembering this book will be more than this one. So, it had some philosophical questions to chew on. Uh, mainly, it dives into the question, do the ends justify the means? Do the ends justify the means? So they dive deeper into that in the novel, uh, in case you're interested. Uh, one other thing I'd like to talk about uh, Robert Ludlum about, uh, what, uh, about Robert Ludlum's books, is almost all of them, or all of them, fe uh, feature real-life conspiracy theories, or are inspired by conspiracy theories. The most popular one in the in the Jason Bourne series is the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Yeah, the President of the United States in uh, 1963. So every book is inspired by a conspiracy theory. And so his books basically ask, what if these conspiracy theories are real? I don't know Robert Ludlum very well. I didn't look into his background very well, so I cannot say whether he believed all the conspiracy theories he wrote about in each of his books. Um, this one, by the way, uh, says the Bancroft Foundation was responsible for the assassination of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. So there you go. <laughs> and so... If, if Robert Ludlum were alive today, he would probably be best buddies with um, Alex Jones because Alex Jones will provide conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory and it would give him a gold mine of ideas for novels. Oh my goodness. So... I don't know. Robert Ludlum likes to write about conspiracy theories. And they're fun. They're fun, I must admit. Um, but I'm not going to... I'm not, uh, I'm not going to tell you which conspiracy this one is based on, because then that would spoil the ending. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Um, so, how would I rate the Bancroft strategy? Um, oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. In the Apocalypse Watch, the protagonist is going after several leads, goes down several paths that lead to multiple dead ends. Like he's trying to get the bad guys, like he's trying to get from point A to point B, but he leads to mul but it leads to multiple dead ends. This one is different. This one in the Bancroft strategy, uh, the character follows a string of connected events. So he goes from one clue to the next, to the next, to the next. And I just think sometimes, sometimes the connections between things are, I would say, flimsy. But the book says there are no coincidences. And in this universe, there really are no coincidences. So he goes from one... He goes from one task to the next, to the next, to the next, to uncover uh, what happened to his friend who was abducted. So, 
this one goes along, um, how do I put this? This, this, the flow of this story is much nicer, as opposed to always hitting a brick wall every time through lots of trial and error, which is what happens in this book. As opposed to hitting a whole bunch of brick walls, this one is going from one, one lead to the next, to the next, to the next. So this is a vast improvement to this one. Um, yeah. So how would I rate Robert Ludlum's The Bancroft Strategy? Ghost written, by the way. <laughs> um, I'd say 8 out of 10. I was moderately impressed. Uh, yeah, yeah, 8 out of 10. I'd recommend it. It's a good, fun time. Uh, I'd only give it 10 out of 10 if it stuck with me for the rest of my life, like... Uh, <laughs> Like Musashi would. The book <laughs> Musashi by Aiji Yoshikawa. That's the only book I'd ever rate like 10 out of 10. Oh no, I think that I rated that one 9 out of 10. Tangent over. Tangent over. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening. Read Robert Ludlum. They're great thrillers. They're great airport novels. They'll keep you busy on 12-hour flights. Goodbye. <laughs>